marks the beginning of Passion Tide. The fifth Sunday in Lent is known historically as Passion Sunday. It's no longer in our American Book of Common Prayer, but it is preserved in our liturgical memory with the veiling of images. The veiling of images of crosses or the saints of our Lord, his friends, go back at least until the seventh century. And in the Middle Ages, it was common to veil them at the beginning of Lent or even a couple of weeks before Lent began. Our modern practice, at least until since the 17th century, is to veil these images on these final two weeks of Lent, known as Passion Tide. So why veil the images at all, either on Passion Sunday or Ash Wednesday or in Quinquagesima Sunday? There are several explanations and several interpretations of this. When a practice began 1400 years ago, many of those reasons have been lost, but there is this. The season of Lent, being a period of 40 days, is one that has a very real sense of being in the wilderness. Certainly we call to mind the Israelites wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. We think of our Lord and His period in the Judean wilderness for 40 days, praying and fasting. And for us, during the season of preparation and penitence and fasting and prayer, there is a real sense of being in the wilderness. In the Middle Ages, there was even a practice of hanging a large veil to separate the sanctuary, the altar, from the nave, from the people. The images of our Lord and His saints are hidden from us. They are covered, and there's a real sense of barrenness, that their beauty and devotional presence is denied us. It's like going to an old home where no one lives in it any longer, and all the furniture and all the furnishings are covered with a sheet, there's a very jarring sense of a wilderness period with that visit. Traditionally on the fifth Sunday of Lent, the Gospel comes from the eighth chapter of John's Gospel. And in this scene, Jesus really chastises and challenges the Jewish crowds for not believing in His words and believing in Him. And He tells them that because they do not, because of their lack of trust, they are not from God. They're so infuriated by this insulting comment that they began to pick up stones to stone Jesus. But to avoid this, we have in the 8th chapter of John's Gospel that Jesus hid himself and withdrew from the temple. It's that reference of our Lord hiding himself and withdrawing from the temple that gives the foundation to our modern practice of mailing images. We no longer read from John chapter 8 in our current lectionary, but we do read from John. We read from John's Gospel, the 11th and 12th chapters. This Sunday, for instance, we have the story of Jesus resuscitating Lazarus and bringing him from the dead. This event also infuriated the crowds, and there was a plot to put him to death. So John tells us that after there was this anger and plot to kill him yet again, that Jesus no longer walked openly. But here is where the veiling of images really becomes powerful in our liturgies and in our devotional life. On Passion Sunday, these images are veiled, marking the final two weeks of Lent. We know we're in this season of wilderness in this barren time. But nearly two weeks later, when we come back for the solemnity of Good Friday, there is this dramatic moment in the liturgy where the priest has a large crucifix, which is veiled. And he processes down the center of the church, and three times he stops and elevates the cross and says, Behold the wood of the cross, whereon was hung the world's salvation. And the people respond, O come, let us worship. And each time that cross is elevated, a part of the crucifix is unveiled. So that by the time we arrive at the altar, the cross, the crucifix, our Lord is completely unveiled. The mystery of salvation is no longer hidden, but shown to us on Good Friday, and is shown to the people. And it's at that moment, after being denied the image of our Lord on His cross, the, the source of our salvation and life, the people see Him unveiled in glory on the cross, showing us God's love. And there we leave our pews, we unveil our heart and come to Him and adore Him.